Hey y'all, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another weekly vlog. There's book mail, reading, book shopping, a little book haul, Walmart haul, grocery haul, go out to eat, watch some movies. I start watching some new daytime talk shows with some people that I like. One especially. Cooking. One I'm cooking with my husband. Yeah, there's a lot here I remember right now. But I hope you enjoy. Oh, I think cleaning too. Hope you enjoy. Okay, I just got back from picking out Walmart grocery order. So, got my husband's juices our sodas, more potatoes, the Triscuits he likes, hard shells for tacos, soft shells for tacos, and this for recipe for my husband's coffee, for recipe for tacos, for recipes for my husband's Triscuits, for recipe, and I have this now for tacos, so I thought I'd try that. Ground beef recipe for the carrots, bacon, onions for recipe, more milk, tapioca, and my husband's yogurt, eggs, and a bunch of frozen meals for my husband. He had to take my, at the car, my work date for the medicine. And it was after I gave him my work date and he entered it. So I don't know if it was because of my birthday or saying it. But either way, he shouldn't have said it. He was like, she is definitely over the age of 18. Like, he just the way he said it. I was like, someone didn't tell you how to talk to women of any age. I was like, wow. And he was like, this is a nice little car. And he's like... I bet mine's faster, and I was like, that's what they all say. And then he's like, well, it's a, it's not fancy, but it's electric, so it's fast. And I'm like, you think your electric car is going to beat my GT? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, and I went to the bookstore before that, so I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so I went to that local bookstore. They have new and used books. I'll start with the new books I got first. The one I've been wanting forever. I don't think I have it. <laughs> Shouting at the Rain by Linda Molly Hunt. Molly Hunt. I'm just going to show you them now and then read the synopsis and stuff in the book haul. And then The King in the Window by Adam Gopnik. The Seam series, The Split Second by John Holm and Michael Wexler. This is the second in the series, so even in the book haul, I won't read synopsis. But these are some used hardbacks, but they don't really look used. But. Jeremy Bender vs. the Cupcake Cadets by Eric Looper. It was $2, but from my store credit. Little Genius by Jess Keating. Keating. This was $5. This one for a while. Tree of Dreams by Laura Russell. $5. Monster, Monster Club Hunters for Hire by Gavin Brown. And then Robber and Me by Joseph Holup. And then The Trespassers by Zilpha Keatley Snyder. $1. Wish Girl by Nikki Lofton. This one didn't have a sticker on it, even though it was on the used part, so it's probably like $2 too. And it sounded amazing. That was everything I got. All right, it is Wednesday, February 22nd. And um, the white speckled pans that I've had forever by Pioneer Woman. I tried to find more like that and I couldn't. I don't know if I've seen these and I just didn't like the wooden handle. They're the same, like white, white speckled, but they have, but better than the gold. I still like the beautiful ones and I'm still gonna use them, but I wanted the jump, like a really large pan for stuff. And this is the jumbo pan. And it matches the ones I've had forever. This is lid. It's just a really huge pan, <laughs> nonstick. And I noticed it, I was in one of the times, I was in Walmart recently. And so I could see what it was called before I look it up. They had the black speckled and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I wanna look online to make sure there isn't. And that's when I found that. And when I found this, I also found more of the white speckled with the wood handle. It came with this really big pan. Not as big as the jumbo, but. And they mostly all have lids. Like that. And the wood is so soft. And also came with this. Just a regular waffle with whipped cream and strawberries and strawberry syrup today. Maybe a little bit too much syrup. Friday, February 24th. Got some book mail from Penal Random House and it says on sale date March 14th. Oh yay. 
Turtles of the Midnight Moon. Thank you so much. So excited. This is a highly anticipated release, so I am so excited. It says March 14th, so thank you so much. All right, it is Saturday, February 25th. I just tried another bookstore in another town. It was horrible, so I didn't even film it. <laughs> but I got some book mail. I thought I'd open it. Um, someone for the author had reached out and asked if they could send me this. And I want to do a giveaway on my Instagram too, so I need to contact them about that. Um, Kairos Takes a Leap by Sasek Recalt. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. And then something from me from HarperCollins. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. They sent an advanced reader's copy of The Manifestor Prophecy, Nick Blake and the Remarkables by Angie Thomas. So excited. And it comes out in April. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to read this. Yay. editing bell here. The next clip is going to be from February 13th. Um, it was so it was a longer clip before I edited it. So that week's vlog was already kind of long, but I didn't want to delete it. And I had time to edit it for this one. And this one was a shorter vlog. So I thought I'd add it at the end of this one. I did cut a big chunk out explaining. I never said who, because I'm not going to, I don't want to ever do that. I don't think about anything. So I don't say what platform it was on or who or made the original comment that got me talking about this because they came back later and responded to me and and then I saw later them talk about it again that they um didn't say it right that they were just talking about a specific um thing that um was just focused on one er one part one person one thing and that's not how they felt about depression and suicide and not the whole community like that so it is a big misconception with depression and stuff in that area what I took from that comment even though that's not what they meant um it's a big misconception in general for a lot of people and when I first got with my husband he was the same way and didn't understand so I still thought it was important to talk about so that's why I still talk about it and use some of the stuff they said even though that's not how they meant them as a general opinion for the whole community um a lot of people do feel that way so I still wanted to talk about it and I'm glad that they um, addressed my comment and addressed it later on too that that's not how they felt um, so but as always with my ADHD and talking to y'all 
um, this chat turn into a sub chat of different topics that leads to a bunch of different things. So uh, this um, is the end of the weekly vlog for up to this point. So the rest of the vlog is this clip from that day. So if you don't care, you can thank you for watching. <laughs> All right, well, it is Monday, February 13th. And I'm painting my toes and I'm on the floor away from the rug and the couch and all that because I'm anal about stuff. I watched something yesterday and I wasn't going to talk about it because I didn't want anybody to take it the wrong way. But down to the south and blunt and honest and just can't shut up apparently. So I felt like I should just because I feel strongly about it. And I wasn't upset about it. But because I mean in a lot of ways everything that was said is how my own husband felt and has come a long way from about depression and how, and suicidal people and if you can always find a silver lining and you can snap out of it and I'm laughing because I just it's I so wish it was that easy um and they said that depressed people or people that even get to the suicidal they think it's only them and that they have it hard but everybody has it hard at some point I think that's just such a misconception I don't think I'm the only one that's kind of a selfish way to be. If I was like that, I'd, I don't think I'm the only depressed person in the world. I don't think I've had it. I'm the only one that's had it hard or the, I'm the, I've had it the hardest out of anybody. I don't think that at all. I don't think I'm alone in my sadness at all. But the thing about pain and sadness is you can't feel someone else's, you can have empathy, but you can only feel your own pain and sadness that doesn't make it selfish like, I can understand that people have been through way much harder things than me, but I have my own pain that I feel. Like, losing my pup is not going to be compared to someone losing their child, but I only know the pain of losing my pup and what she meant to me. And if that makes sense. So, even though I know people have had it harder, I can only feel my own pain and my pain in my head, which is like my worst enemy, and what that does. So, I can know that there are people that have it worse, but my pain is my pain and nobody can take that away from me even if I wish they could um so there's that and then snapping out of it it just doesn't work like that I was diagnosed in I thought high school but I think it was eighth grade and I think I had it before then and I was only diagnosed in eighth grade because my mom had no choice because there was this thing I ran away from home and my friend I didn't know she was doing it until I saw her doing it, but I'm not going to be like, hey, my friend's stealing. <laughs> I mean, I'm in eighth grade. I'm not going to. She was didn't bring any underwear. It's so stupid when we ran away and she was taking underwear. And so because I saw her, even though I didn't know she was going to do it beforehand, I saw her and I didn't s scream and yell that she was doing it. I could have been charged too, but they, as a minor, but they said they saw some things on my arm and they said if I, uh, the wife of the guy that was in charge of this worked at um, a youth thing for mental health. If I agreed to counseling with her, that they wouldn't press charges, so my mom didn't have any choice, and my mom did not like her. She didn't believe in the whole thing, didn't believe in the medicine for it, and she, the woman wanted to put me on medicine. My mom was like, absolutely not. So I think I had it when I was even in elementary school because of, I don't know if it was things in my brain plus things that happened in my childhood, but anyway, <laughs> you can't just... I can see a silver lining all day long. I can see positive things. My brain will always go to the negative. I try not to be like that in the real life because my mom is so pessimistic about every single thing. And I don't want to be like that. It's a constant battle. But I can't just see that silver lining and snap out of it. It doesn't work like that. And it kind of weird way it hurt my feelings when they were saying these things like because I know people feel this way like my husband thought that too he doesn't suffer from depression he doesn't understand it he thinks you can just control your brain and tell yourself to snap out of it and you have so much to be happy about and I know I have so much to be happy about like I have so much to be grateful for and I am so blessed and that makes me feel even worse because I know all this and I can't I just can't <laughs> and I'm gonna cry but <laughs> And we've been together almost 10 years and at first it was frustrating for him but he is finally he under he doesn't understand firsthand but with me he has a better understanding 
And like, sometimes it's still not even because with my pup, he's like, you need to just focus on the memories. You know, you can just remember everything. You can see her here. And I'm like, see my brain, <laughs> I do focus on the memories. That's all I see in my head, but my brain tortures me with them. So like, this is what you had and you can't have it anymore. You won't be able to hold her anymore. You can't get puppy kisses anymore. All these things. So totally different brains. <laughs> I always said my brain hates me and I wish it was that easy <laughs> I really do and I don't like to because I think there's a lot of um people online that it's like a bandwagon and I won't it's, it's not even people I watch anymore but just some things don't add up I mean and uh, a lot of them have been called out for faking but a lot of them haven't, but it's like a bandwagon. They want to be on it with mental health. My mental health isn't good today. And I mean, I might say that too. I'm just saying like these people that I don't buy it <laughs> and I couldn't do, I couldn't go to work, you know, and they understood because of my mental health, like it's, and then they take sponsorships for mental health things. Like it's just all icky. These aren't people I follow. So, but anymore, so I don't like to talk about it. Or they want sympathy or how they get, oh, I was having a mad mental health day. So, so-and-so sent me this off my wish list. And that's so icky to me. <laughs> like, if you want to send something for your birthday or because you were just thinking of them or, but encouraging, I don't know. I'll get in a whole rant about that. And then. Oh, I'm going to have to stop them from being able to send me things because they do it so much. But yeah, they never stop it <laughs> for this. So I don't want it to ever feel like, oh, pity me. Oh, who is me? Oh, I can't do this. No, I did get in a funk with my pup, but that was just on Instagram and YouTube. But at this point, I don't get paid for YouTube. You don't, I'm not going to know if you can't get paid from Instagram. So these are just like hobbies. But that didn't, when I was in my funk, I didn't stop my housework, my cooking, and when it was warm outside, I almost worked myself to death outside because that gave my brain a little bit busy like it was still there. But I don't just use it as an excuse not to do anything. And I know there are people that aren't able to do anything and it's not an excuse. So don't get me wrong. I'm saying the people that I don't watch anymore that use it as an excuse. And then they say things that don't add up with mental health, like any form, because I know all mental health situations are different but it just doesn't it's icky so I just wish there was more awareness and acting like suicide was I can see where you would think it was selfish because I mean that's a lot of things in the past have kept me from doing it because before my husband I didn't really think anybody would care if I was gone that much I know some people I know my, there are people but I just didn't want it to be about me. And then the people that do it where loved ones will find, I think that is awful. <laughs> if you want to say something selfish about suicide, doing it where someone will find, like, anybody finding you is awful. But just people that let their family find, like, that is so evil to me that you would do that to somebody. <laughs> and I'm not for condemning people that have done it because I totally understand it and I've been there myself. When I say my pup saved me many times, she saved me from an abusive, because I left because of her. And then she saved me after that many times because she's the reason I'm still here. I just didn't, I, I just couldn't, but I didn't know what would happen to her. She needed me. So don't think that I'm talking bad about people that do it because I've been there. I'm talking about people that do it and then let family. Anyway, going off. <laughs> So, just thinking that people that are depressed to the point of being able to end it can just snap out of it. I just, I don't know. It just amazes me with it, how far we've come because I know mental health was just such a thing you didn't talk about for so long to where we are now. Where it's still so not understood. And it's not just that point. Like, you see all these other people that, like the people I don't watch anymore saying... It's a self-love day or self-care day. I need it because of my mental health. And that stuff doesn't. <laughs> uh, 
all this self-love in the world is part of the problem. I think there's enough self-love going on out there. And that might be an unpopular opinion, but all the me, me, me time is getting all ridiculous. Why don't you do something for somebody else? <laughs> that might make you happier. And a bubble bath or alone time, self-care and a face mask, it's not gonna do anything. I mean, yes, you need those times, but thinking that they do anything for your depression is ridiculous. Like, I needed a mental health day. I had a bubble bath, and I had, like, <laughs> if only it were that easy. I had a bubble bath, and I'm just feeling so much better about life, let me tell you. I focused only on me today. Someone with depression saying focus on me today, that's the worst thing in the world. I don't want to focus on me. Thank you, but no. And if I'm offending you, I'm so sorry. If this does work for you and you really do have depression, I am so happy for you. But I just don't understand how it could ever happen in the long run. Like, you just keep having bubble baths and a me, 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 me time and you're just fine. Because it's everything that I've studied in school and everything I've seen talking to others and in therapy. And that's just, and just my own personal. I don't want to focus on me. Unless it's actual therapy. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, this self-love stuff of today. There's so much wrong with the world today. But like I was talking about before, I'm not going to be the person that, <clears throat> oh, people won't subscribe or people will unsubscribe if I don't feel what everybody else feels that they're, everybody today is saying is the right thing to feel and think. And oh, we're supposed to hate these people or this book or this author or this person. Is... <sighs> no. <laughs> Unless I feel there's a reason not to like something or someone, and then I'm not gonna say that I do. In this cancel culture, I don't understand that at all, and hatred, and the awful hate that gets spewed on people that you feel has done some wrong, like that makes you any better. Like the hate that they're spewing and the threats and the evil that they're dishing out makes that Makes their evil better evil because of the evil they think they're going up against. Like, it's so stupid and ignorant and just, ugh. Like, a person who was a straight, white female attacking me. Wasn't even a follower. Just found me, I guess, from hashtag. Just following the hashtags of Harry Potter to spew hate. That, like, who does that? That's evil to me. You're just looking up hashtags of Harry Potter to go to pages of people you don't even follow to give them hate for reading Harry Potter. Like, think about that. How stupid is that? And evil. So, uh, a straight female, because I went to her page and it was all, because she says that herself, and told me that I was hurting firsthand the trans community. I was doing them harm by reading Harry Potter and liking it and talking about it. Again, someone not of the community she's talking about coming in and hating me. Meanwhile, and I posted about this, like, I just, and so many people came out support, even in, in my messages saying, I'm in the LGBTQ community, I'm a trans, and I don't have, like, they're books. And the books don't have any hate for, you know, me or these other people in the community, so I don't have a problem with it. It's all, it's usually like 90% of the time people that have nothing to do with the topic. They just wanna be in the focal, they wanna be jumping on the bandwagon. Like it's a popular thing, it has nothing to do with you. You have no voice to, This is you're not an own voice. So why are you spewing hate? Why are you looking for, it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, this is my ADHD. Like, I'll start on one thing and it'll, like... <laughs> but, yeah, I did feel the move to come on and talk about the depression thing, even though I didn't want to. And I didn't leave them any hate, and I still follow them. Like, I... So, I hate typing out stuff, because you never know how it comes across, whether it's a comment, a text message, an email, whatever. And I put that on there. Like, I hope... I just, you know, I feel the need to give my opinion as, a, as my own experience, because, you know, even my own husband felt the things that this person was saying at a point. Uh, when we first got married or together. So, 
no hate at all. It just makes me sad that people actually think you could snap out of it. But I think you're the only one that ever felt like this and that nobody has it worse than you. It just makes you feel sound so selfish as a depressed person. And I hate that people think of us like that. It makes me sad more than anything. And I really do wish it was that easy. I've stopped antidepressants just because when I was looking up stuff to go to try to connect anything to the high blood pressure I was getting. And there was other scary things that just make me not want to... I want to try to not be on an antidepressant anymore. I just don't want to be on it anymore. Anyway, I need to finish painting my toes because I only did one coat on one foot. So, it's probably completely dry by now. <laughs> I hope this doesn't come off the wrong way. But that is another thing wrong with the world today. You, People get offended about literally anything. I could say the sky is very blue. Somebody would get offended and say it's light blue. I'm being dramatic and it's not, I don't, it's not what I'm, I'm just trying to make a point. Might literally offend it over everything. But yeah, I won't be one of those people that acts all high and mighty and says I won't support this author or this person or this book because of this if I don't really feel that way. Some, I'm telling you, those people, a lot of them, I doubt they even feel what they're saying. They're just doing it to stay popular, stay talked about, and in the, uh, in the popular part of the crowd that they're in, whether it be entertainment, booktube, Instagram, movies. I'm sure some of those people have the most evil actual thoughts. I know some of them booktube back that way and some are horrible to disabled people in real life. Like I've gotten messages. So it's just, that doesn't tell you just because they act that way and say these are their thoughts and opinions about things doesn't make it that actually who they are. So, you won't get that here. I'm sure it's got me into trouble, but not any trouble that I care about because <laughs> just, I'm sure it will continue to, but I won't change who I am or what I think just to please anybody. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting now and finish this. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's the end of this vlog. And the end of that discussion turned sub rant that veered off into several things because of my ADHD. Because once it sparks an idea, I start talking about that. And I hope I didn't offend anybody that actually deals with these things. If I offended you and you don't actually deal with these things and you pretend to, then I don't really care if I offended you. But if you do deal with these things in your life and I offended you in some way, I'm sorry. But I hope you enjoyed the vlog. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that if you'd like to. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.